book of Exodus, chapter number 14. Exodus chapter number 14. We're going to start at verse 10. The five that you may signify by saying amen. Amen. Thank you. you that can, we ask that you stand and reverence the reading God's word. Exodus chapter 14, beginning at verse number 10. Amen. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were soon afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us? to carry us forth out of Egypt. It is not the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will shew to you this day. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord, <laughs> the Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that, thy, that they may go forth. But lift up thy rod, stretch out thine hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground in the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And I will get my honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his hosts, upon all his chariots, and upon all his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. When I have gotten my honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. God's word for God's people. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Heavenly Father, we come down, God, just to see thank you. thank you. God, we thank you now for this day. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for your grace and mercy that you allowed to bestow upon us one more time. Now, God, as I stand behind this sacred desk, hide me now behind that wooden cross that we don't see me, but the God that lives in me. Dip me down in your word of wisdom and bring me up in preaching power and might. And I may be for clarity and understanding that someone will cry out, I yield, I yield, what must I do to be saved? In the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may take your seat if you can. But in studying, there's different variations of the Bible. And I often like to refer to the Message Bible because the Message Bible meets plain. And that same scripture in the message Bible reads thusly. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up and saw him. The Egyptians are coming to get us. They were totally afraid. They cried out in terror to God. They told Moses, weren't the cemeteries large enough in Egypt so that you had to take us out here in the wilderness to die. What have you done to us, taking us out of Egypt? Back in Egypt, didn't we tell you this would happen? Didn't we tell you, leave us alone here in Egypt? We're better off as slaves to the Egypts than a corpse in the wilderness. Moses spoke to the people and said, don't be afraid. Stand firm 
and watch God do his work Amen. of salvation for you today. Take a good look at the Egyptians today, for you will never see them again. God will fight the battle for you. But you keep your mouth shut. Amen. Come on. But you keep your mouth shut. God said to Moses, why cry out unto me? Speak to the Israelites in order to them to get moving. Hold out your staff high. Stretch out your hand over the sea. Split the sea. And the Israelites will walk through on dry ground. Meanwhile, I'll make sure the Egyptians keep up their stubborn chase. I'll use Pharaoh and his entire army, his chariots, his horsemen, to put my glory on display uh -huh. so that the Egyptians will realize I am God. Amen. I don't want to worry your patience on today. But I stopped by just to encourage somebody who may feel like on every leaning side you have no place to go. Spirit of the Lord said, if I stand still, he will fight for me. If I stand still, he will fight for me. See, uh, this, this scripture, everyone talks about it. And as the Lord began to deal with me with this scripture, um, I realized we are kind of in this time right now in this world. Yeah. Everybody's complaining about something. Yeah. Politics. Yeah. This, that, everything. everything. Yeah. Like I said, the devil got us blinded with all of these things. But nobody is realizing that the devil ain't got no authority over this earth. He has no authority over this earth. He has no authority over our lives. God still sits on the throne. And he knows exactly what's going on. And everything that's going on, he's using to get his glory. I know it may not seem like it. I know it may not look like it. But you got to understand that God don't work on our time. God works on his time. And our time, it ain't his time. And sometimes we look at everything that's going on in the world and in the church. Amen. Because truth be told, there's some stuff going on in the church too. Amen. 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 It's everything that the devil wants to cause division. Yeah. Because the scripture said when they came in one place, yeah. on one accord, yeah. the Holy Ghost came like a mighty rushing wind. And that's the one thing that the devil don't want. He don't want unity. He don't want us to come together. He want us to be talking amongst each other, having secret conversations over here, and doing this over there. When we come to this house, that is not the place to where we do that at. We're supposed to be here for one purpose, and that's to put his God and lift him up. And to draw everybody back to him. Can't be the witness in here. Amen. Just like the, just like the Israelites. They would rather have been slaves than trust God. Amen. Amen. Say it again, Say it again. Huh? Something wrong with that picture. They would rather have been slaves than to trust God. But there has to be somebody that'll stand in the midst of everything that's going on. Amen. You got to stand on God's word. Yeah. And you got to believe that God will do exactly what he said he would do. I don't care what the situation looks like or what it may seem like. And I don't care how much the devil hounds you on your back. As long as you got Jesus, you don't need nobody else. Can I get a again? As long as you got Jesus, you don't need nobody else. See, I understand that the Israelites, and see, the thing about it was, if you pay attention, it's still everything that's in this Bible is going on right now. The Egyptians wandered in the wilderness for 40 years 
But when it was supposed to go, it was only a three-day journey. But the reason why God had them wander in the wilderness for 40 years is because he had to change their mindset. You got some people so stubborn, they don't want to listen to nothing. They want to stay exactly the way it is. Because this is what we've been doing, and this is how we've been doing. But when God sent somebody that can help grow you, instead of you receiving, you'd rather fight it. I know I had to get too many amen on that, yeah. but that's the way. I told you, I'm going to preach the word, because the word is what's going to draw people. Yeah. Can I get a witness in here? Amen. But I was not going to be wandering around down here on earth yeah. and sitting here because I'm used to doing this, and now God has brought somebody that can help elevate me. And then I wonder whether I'm going to receive it or not, just like the Israelites. I'd rather be a slave. I'd rather just do it the way we better do it. But God is trying to elevate you. God is trying to move you. God said, get moving. It's time out for stagnation. It's time out. It's time for us to get moving. Because God said, the way this world is coming, they need to see me move. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Yet. I understand. I understand. It's tight, but it's right. Amen. Can I get a witness in here? And what you must understand is instead of complaining, and instead of talking about the situation, yeah. instead of going back and forth and trying to cause confusion and division and all this and all that, all you got to do is stand on the word of God yeah. and believe God for what he said. Yeah. Because God's word don't lie. Yeah. And we can't be a church to see we believe in God, but we ain't trust in God's word. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Amen. Yeah, I know. I know. But this scripture, this, this, this scripture, and the one thing that I really didn't understand, and I said, Lord, you got to help me with this. Even after God had them walk through on dry land, some of them still wanted to go back to Egypt. How you going to get back? There ain't no boat. What's wrong with that? It's time out for this mindset. God said, let this mind that be in you be in Christ Jesus. You got to turn your whole thoughts over to him. Let him lead God and direct you in the way you should go. And the one thing I like that what he said about it is keep your mouth closed. You got a bad habit. A bad habit. Not in the world. Right here in the church. Amen. Amen. Ain't nobody going to clap for that. Amen. Ain't nobody going to clap for that. Amen. We got a bad habit. Instead of praying for somebody, we better go and talk about it secretly. No, we not know. No, this is not what God brought us here for. We come here to help each everybody and one another. That's what we come here for. And if you can't do that, what Bible are you reading? Amen. What God are you serving? Yeah. Truth be told, everybody got sin. Yeah. Just because somebody else may be exposed and yours behind closed doors, you're making your okay. yeah. Sister Priestess said it just now in their little reading. Stop looking down on everybody. Stop being judgmental towards everybody. Try to do something to help lift them up. Not only in a missionary and the women's, but that should be everybody in the church. There are some things that God is trying to get our attention with. And every time God tries to do something to show his glory, here we come, trying to fumble the ball. Let God do his work. If you stand still and be quiet, God will fight for you. And I ain't telling you what I think. I'm telling you what the scripture said. I ain't going to tell you nothing that I can't back up in the scripture. Can I get a witness? Because one thing I'm not going to let anybody do is put me in a corner when it comes to this word of God. Yeah. I know this backwards, forwards, upside down because he placed it inside of me. Yeah. Just for a day and time such as this. Yes, 
Can I get a witness in here? So what you must understand is God said if you be still and be quiet, he will fight for you. See, when we mess it up, we always try to put our hand in something. As soon as something go wrong, we jump on the phone calling somebody. That guy, you know, I just said, you want to talk this little pity party. Don't get rid of your pity party and have a praise party. enough to listen to the spirit of God. Yes. Regardless of how you look at me, regardless of how you may feel about it. God didn't call me to preach according to your feelings. God called me to save souls. Amen. And that's what I'm going to do. Everybody's soul is way more important than your feelings. That's right. Your soul is more important than your own feelings. Amen. So if I tell you something that may hurt your feelings, that may help you get the glory, I apologize, but I love you enough to tell you the truth. Yeah. It's time out for all of this foolishness. We are living in a day and time where the world is drastically coming to an end. And everybody is faced with something. Yes. Everybody going through something. If you, if you look at the Israelites, they were slaves on one side and they were faced with a sea on the other side. Yes. How can I escape? Somebody right now feel like they're drowning oh, in their problem. Oh, Somebody right now feel like they're sinking and they can't get up. But I stopped by just to let you know if you just stand still, the Lord will fight for you. I don't care how bad they talk about you. I don't care how much they go and have secret conversations. Because the Lord said, what you do in secret, I'll expose it one day. Can I get a witness in there? And where you go run, and where you go hide, I don't need the rocks to cry out for me. Because I can cry out to the Lord all by myself. Can I get a witness in there? The Bible said that the children of Israel was faced with a big red sea. And I heard that they kept complaining. And I heard that they kept mourning and groaning. But I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, Moses talked to your people and let them know if they stand still and be quiet. I will fight the battles with them. I will get the victories with them. I will deliver them out of Pharaoh's hand. And what else I'm going to do? When Pharaoh give up the chase, don't worry about it. Look back at Pharaoh and say, bye-bye. Oh, Pharaoh, I won't see you no more. The Bible said, God spoke to Moses and said, reach out what you got in your hand and when you reach out what you got in your hand I'll part the red sea and the Bible said the children of Israel walk through on dry land walk through on dry land walk through on dry land and the anybody in this place that feel like you may be drunk I'm 
the roof of song. See when the storms of the life keep on raging, the Lord, yes sir, stand by me. Can I get a witness to that? Is there really anybody who say that the Lord stood by me in my storm? Stand still, and the Lord will fight for you. Thank you. Some said I wouldn't make it. Some said I wouldn't be here today. Some said I never about to do anything.
Church of Our Lord. Everyone stand up.